Have you ever wondered if an AR or basically any other semi-auto rifle actually loses that much velocity compared to using a bolt-action rifle with the same barrel length? Well, in today's video, I'm going to try and answer this question. Notice I said try. Now, the reasoning as to why a bolt action would have more velocity than an AR or basically any other semi-auto out there is that bolt actions only have one place for the pressure to escape. So basically, whatever pressure builds up behind the bullet only has one place to go. With an AR though, or basically any other semi-auto rifle, part of the pressure has to go back through this gas block right here, through the gas tube, and back to the bolt carrier group. This cycles the bolt carrier group, which cycles the next round into the chamber. So unlike a bolt action rifle, you are not going to be getting the maximum amount of pressure out the muzzle end here but how much this difference is in velocity that's what we're trying to figure out in today's video each one of these rifles is going to be chambered in the 308 Winchester, and both of them are going to have a 16-inch barrel, 1 in 10 twist with 6 grooves. So other than using the same manufacturer of barrel, it's about as fair as I can make it. Now there is one thing that I forgot to mention about the AR setup, and that is that it's running an adjustable gas block. In order to get pressure to go back to the bulk carrier group, what manufacturers do is drill a hole in one wall of the barrel directly where the gas block mounts to. Now this sends gas through the gas block, through the gas tube, and then finally back to the bulk carrier group. And the hole of this size is going to depend on the manufacturer, but most manufacturers are going to slightly oversize the hole so that you get enough pressure going back to reliably feed just about any ammo type out there. The issue with this though, especially when shooting suppressed, is that sometimes it's too much pressure and it actually cycles the bulk carrier group too fast. Now the purpose of an adjustable gas block like this is to regulate the amount of pressure going back to the bulk carrier group. To do this, most adjustable gas blocks use a screw that closes and opens the hole depending on how much pressure you need to send back to the bulk carrier group. Now obviously, the more this hole is closed off, the more pressure actually stays inside the barrel and the less amount of pressure goes back to the bulk carrier group. So in this video, I have the hole opened up the whole way. Kind of weird to say. But anyway, so that we get the maximum amount of pressure going back to the bulk carrier group so that we can see what the actual difference is between semi-autos and bolt-action rifles. <music> The first load that we'll be comparing is this 147 grain FMJ made by Norma. For some reason, that thing right there was not cooperating with me, and I only got three shots to register, but anyways, the average was 2,606 feet a second, with a standard deviation of 20.2. As you can see, I shot eight shots to try and get five to register, but only three registered. I am super shocked to say this, but the bolt action rifle literally had the exact same average of 2,606 feet a second. We did have a full five shots, so the standard deviation changed a little to 9.3. Yeah, yeah, not the best group ever right there. So far, it is not looking like there's any difference in velocity between this AR and this bolt action rifle. But we got a few more loads to test out, so let's go ahead and do that. This is a 165 grain soft point made by PPU. Let's go ahead and see how it fares in terms of velocity between these two different platforms. Well, I think I found the issue. The spacing is nowhere close enough to the bore right there. That's why I was having so many issues before. Let me go ahead and try and fix that. There we go. There is absolutely no way that I was going to be able to get the magneto speed close enough without taking that handguard off. So now I think we're good to go. Anyways, here's that screw that I was talking about earlier, and that's adjusted out about as far as I would want to go. Now that time it worked as expected and we got all five shots to register. The average velocity was 2,565 feet a second with a pretty low standard deviation of 8.3. Eh. Yeah. I almost don't want to show this, but the average velocity of this bolt action right here actually came in at less than the AR. It came in at 2,543 feet a second with a standard deviation of 12. Well, the bolt action group appears to be about the same size as that AR right there. The AR platform was coming in at 22 feet a second higher than the bolt action rifle. I never would have guessed that that would have happened. But what about reloads and heavy bullets? I'm glad you asked. I loaded up these 208 grain ELDM bullets with the exact same powder charge, so let's see how they compare these platforms. Definitely not the best standard deviation rate there at 25.1, but anyways, the average velocity was 2305 with that 208 grain ELDM. About like usual right there. The first three weren't too bad though. Now, 
Now with the reloads, the bolt action was actually going a little bit faster than the AR right there. It averaged 2325 feet a second with a standard deviation of 19.2. That is exactly 20 feet per second faster than what the AR was doing, so it basically reversed what happened with the 165 grain soft points. That's pretty crazy. Well, I was pretty hopeful with these three shots right here, but then these two flyers showed up. But what exactly would happen if I closed off that adjustable gas block completely? I mean, I'd basically have a bolt action at that point. Would the velocity increase? Would my group shrink? Whoa now, let's not get crazy here. Well, I got this screw adjusted in as far as it'll go, so let's go ahead and test all three loads one more time. Literally the exact same velocity as before, 2,606 feet a second. That is absolutely freaking nuts. Unfortunately, the group right there did not shrink down at all. Now let's see if those 165 grain saw points have the same results. Well, we were getting an average velocity of 2559 feet a second with a standard deviation of 10.4. That is slightly less velocity than with the gas block completely open. Well, that group shrank up a bit. Still not the best performance, but probably the best group of the day. And now on to the last load of the day. Well, that one averaged 2,315 feet a second, which I believe is slightly faster than it was with the gas block completely open. The standard deviation was 22.4. Once again, three shots were pretty good, and then two shots down here were terrible. Now let's try and figure out what exactly was happening with all these different tests. So the first bullet, the 147 gray Norma FMJ, I have absolutely no idea what powder they're using, but all three tests were producing the exact same velocity, which is pretty freaking crazy in my mind. But anyways, based on this information, I think that Norma's using a pretty fast burning powder that creates most of its pressure before it gets to the gas block. I definitely could be wrong, but that's just what kind of makes sense in my mind. Another thing that makes me say that they're using a fast burning powder is because in a full length 24 inch barrel, I'm only getting about 150 feet a second faster than the 16 inch barrel. So that says something there too. Now with the 165 grain soft point by PPU, I have absolutely no idea what was going on because the AR was actually going faster than the bolt action and even the AR with the adjustable gas block closed. With conventional logic, that makes absolutely no sense to me, so if you know what's going on, I'd really appreciate it if you commented. And yes, all the ammo was from the same exact box. Now with the 208 grain ELDM reload, I was using IMR 4064 as a powder, and in terms of 308 powders, it's kind of a middle of the range burn rate. So what I think happened is by the time it hit the adjustable gas block, not quite all of the pressure formed yet, so this took away a little bit of the velocity from the AR. As we saw, the AR with the adjustable gas block closed and the bolt action rifle were both going faster than the AR with the adjustable gas block open with this specific load right here. So having a medium burn rate makes sense to me. Based on all this information, it really seems like the faster the burn rate of the powder being used, the less difference there is in the velocity between an AR and a bolt action rifle. Now don't get me wrong, there's certainly a lot more at play, so I could be wrong about all this but it makes sense in my mind. Anyways, I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching, and remember, don't let ballistics drive you bananas.